my name is Tony McKenzie. I entered Stony Brook in August of 2015 and graduated in May of 2019. And right now I'm the chief resident at the Institute for Family Health at Mount Sinai. After I applied to Stony Brook and was interviewed, I met Dr. George Tyson, who was a neurologist at Stony Brook, who introduced me to the idea of family medicine, the idea that community medicine may be best practiced through family medicine, where I'm able to follow a patient from the time they're born to the time that they pass, um, and, and thus developing a strong continuity of care, a strong relationship. These are ideas that I didn't actually understand well until Dr. Tyson introduced them to me during our interview. Um, and we spoke for a couple years after um, I entered Stony Brook and kept going with the theme of what is community medicine, what is family medicine. Through Stony Brook Home is how I met many other doctors who are doing this kind of community work. Dr. Phillips runs a lot of Stony Brook Home, and so I would work with him while I was there. He always challenged me to think about, right, the whole human being. How am I prescribing medications? Will patients be able to afford that? Do they live close enough to the pharmacy that I'm sending it to? To if they're at Walmart, are they gonna? Am I gonna put them on the four dollar prescription plan? Can they afford that four dollars? How are they getting their food? Who is helping them at home? Really, that was a community medicine that. Dr. George Tyson started me with and Dr. Phillips continued with me through Stony Brook Home. Dr. Faustino out in Nassau County was so tied in and clued in with his patients. I would watch him and how effortlessly someone would walk into the clinic. He'll go, hey, remember their name right off the bat. How's your daughter? Is she in school? She's a junior already, knew everything about them. And that made them light up, right? That made them build such trust with him. They can tell him him anything and he was open and he never rushed them. Um, these were the models that I had at Stony Brook of primary care of community-based medicine and that I continue to look to today. The very last person who actually is not a practicing doctor is um, Dr. Adelsis Jordan. Um, he was like the head of diversity at the School of Medicine and he just knew everything about Long Island, everyone on Long Island, and all the any community-based event, he was somehow behind. Um, I know he led a reading program for folks who were illiterate on Long Island. He actually also started a program at Madonna Heights, which was a kind of like a group home for girls who were sometimes getting in trouble more often than others. So it was a nice group home where they would come, they would meet with teachers on a regular basis. They had a very core group of um, people who were caring for them. So Dr. Jordan would get young women doctors to meet with them as well and we would give them lectures all the time. He showed me how to actually link with other community members to build a stronger relationship. Um, so thanks to Dr. Tyson for introducing me to Stony Brook Home and all these other mentors who showed me that Community is knowing the patient, is knowing community members, and knowing what's available to patients. Um, and that was just the start, the foundation that I'm now building on as a resident here in New York City. Dr. Kevin Zakharoff was an anesthesiologist that I met. He ran our ethics class, and he was so, someone that was so in touch with empathy, empathy for students, empathy for himself, empathy for patients, and how ethically, as doctors, we run into many situations and how we have to give ourselves grace and give our patients grace in order to truly service them. And so I was just so inspired by working with him in the ethics class that I kind of just continue to talk to him and we still talk to this day. Actually, all of these people I still talk to this day. Dr. Wackett ran kind of like our, physical exam and interviewing skills workshop. And we did that maybe once a week, I don't remember. But it was so thorough. Every week was a new part of the body. We, he also gave us tips on like how to speak to people, how to empathize with people, how to take notes while talking with people, things that I use to this day. Um, I will say hard parts of the exam, like looking in the back, back of the eye, I learned through Stony Brook, which I've seen some of my colleagues actually struggle with. Um, a lot of people say that doctors now don't even do physical exams, but that was a huge part of our training and we got so much information from the patient. By some, You have to touch them, you have to look at them, you have to see how they're breathing, you have to listen to their lungs, you have to look in the back of their eyes. A lot of my mentors too were not just attendings, but were like my peers, the people in my class. They're phenomenal, they're doing great things now, they were doing great things then. Seeing how well they could do made me push 
myself as well to be the best doctor, the best community member that I could be. I can't just say it was only the attendings or the um, faculty, it was definitely my peers. There were two clubs that were very near and dear to me. I was a part of many other clubs, but these really mattered to me because I, I ran them and, or started them. One was the Social Justice in Medicine um, Club, and the other one was White Coats for Black Lives. Social Justice in Medicine for me was exactly what it sounds like. You no know, understanding that there were many disparities that a lot of our patients were dealing with, whether it be in New York, in the United States, in the globe. And as physicians, we have a duty to address those injustices in order to best service our patients. And then the other club, White Coats for Black Lives, was a new club that I actually um, started in Stony Brook. So it was a club that's been in many um, med schools around the country, but it wasn't at Stony Brook. And so we started the chapter, I think right after Philando Castile was shot. Um, what we recognize is that patients who identify as African American or indigenous are at higher risk of being profiled by specific members in the community. And as physicians, we need to recognize that that poses a health risk. I and mean, we're recognizing that specific communities are experiencing this more than others. And as doctors, how can we advocate for these communities? We've worked with a lot of groups in Suffolk County that was doing very similar work um, to encourage patients on what they should know, um, how they can contribute, to understand like how our biases in medicine can affect how we distribute care. There was a lot of kind of groundwork that we were just building as to what does health disparities and what does um, differences in health care, how does it af affect specific populations. Med school formally taught me how to be a family doctor and now I'm here practicing as a family doctor in New York City. Nothing is done in a vacuum. You must do things with community and Stony Brook is a community where you can do those things. Whatever it is, trust your passions and tell people about your passions. I had an idea Stony Brook honed that idea and now I'm, I'm running with it.